Hello everybody, this is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com and in today's After Effects tutorial we're going to talk about anonymizing someone's face using the mask tracking ability of Adobe After Effects CC. It's pretty easy, it's very unique and new and I think you'll enjoy it. And it gets over that difficult part of sort of masking out people's faces when they start moving around during an interview or they're walking somewhere in footage or you need to sort of blank out a license plate that moves along but big thing is that it'll track some kind of feature and I'll show you how to make it work. Let's uh, open up After Effects and start anonymizing. So the first thing in After Effects to do is to bring in your footage. Once you've acquired the footage you need, you just have to import it into here. You can do that by double clicking or by right clicking going down to import and file or however you want to do it. Now you take the footage and then you just drag it onto a new comp to create a new composition that is the size and duration of your footage. Since I'm assuming you're going to be exporting this back out as the exact same size or just simply importing the AEP and then taking the comp and putting it into Premiere. So we don't want to mess with the size of anything. We want to preserve the quality and size and everything we've got going on. So. First off, you want to basically find the subject that you wish to uh, sort of block out. And now we're going to make use of this fantastic new feature that only works on adjustment layers. So you have to make an adjustment layer first, and this adjustment layer will be controlling the way in which things are sort of made anonymous. So I'm gonna do this by applying a mosaic and the mosaic effect when applied to an adjustment layer uh, applies the effects on that adjustment layer to anything below it. And what I would like to do is not only put a mosaic on there, but also a slider control. And I'm going to set up the horizontal and vertical blocks to be linked to that slider control, like so. And I'm going to have the horizontal blocks be multiplied by 16 and the vertical blocks be multiplied by nine. Meaning whatever I put the slider control to, that is going to be sort of how many, you know, 16 by nine, 32 by 18 and so on. So this allows me to ensure that they are squares and that they can be as square as I would like. And I can do this by smaller increments if I would like, but you know, once you've reached the level of anonymity you're looking for, uh, for me I went with like a four, just so you can, you know, sort of tell that there's a person there and you can tell they have hair. But I mean, if you want to go all the way, you could put this down to zero, or if you want to get really extreme, just take this and type in fill and you could just put a fill of a full color over this whole thing, you know, however you would like. But, you know, I prefer the mosaic just because it looks cool. So I'm going to poke the eye out here. And what I need to do now is basically draw a mask around what I would like to be removing. In this case, uh, it is my face. I mean, I don't have too many hard feelings towards my face, but uh, in this case, it's uh, what we need to remove. So I'm just going to expand this so that it takes up my entire face area. So that seems about right. And you can rotate it or however, but draw the mask on as close to uh, where you would like it, but allow for some room for error. So now when I put the eyeball back on, you can see it's got this weird uh, circle around my head. Now I also go into the mask here and I feather it out, you know, just uh, feather it about 50, I think should be good. Which uh, seems, seems good enough for me. And uh, now the big part is we're gonna let the computer use the new feature of Adobe CC to track this mask. And that's gonna pull up the tracker over here. And it's not quite integrated with all the other tools, so it's a little bit uh, special still. And you can have it track the position, the position and rotation, position scale and rotation, position scale, rotation and skew or perspective, depending on how long you want this to take and how exact you want this to try to follow your subject. Usually position, scale, and rotation is fine, but if you have a lot of moving towards and away from the camera, then you'll probably want something like perspective or also to put the skew in there. But I'm just gonna use position and rotation because I know I only move my head left to right and I rotate it a bit. So now you just click moving ahead 
and it will begin attempting to solve every frame. I'm just going to let this go for a little bit and sort of explain to you what it's doing. It's going to analyze what's inside this mask and attempts to keep the mask on those pixels. So I'm just going to stop what we're doing and we'll see what we've created. What it's done is it's created a new mask path, which means it's editing the handles and basically it's selecting like this and then it is, you know, scaling, rotating, moving, and it's doing all of those things on every frame to keep this thing in line. So you can see the one that I did there was a big mistake. And you can always go back and you can select that mask and you can always press play and it'll try to solve over anything that you've done and it'll just keep going in one direction until you say stop and you can go ahead by one frame if you'd like you can go backwards uh, but in general uh, from wherever you are it's going to start solving from that point and that is about all that you need to do uh, making people anonymous making license plates anonymous uh, blocking out people's faces has never been easier a few things to remember when using this technique, though. I mean, the first is that uh, there aren't too many options around it. This is not a good technique for uh, replacing planar tracking, for example, just because it is not uh, very exact. It works with rough numbers, and it works with, with a rough approximation of where it should be, which makes it ideal for this kind of thing only. All right. And another thing to remember is that if you don't have areas solved, and this is in there are no keyframes here, then I mean, that's kind of where you're stuck at. But this can automate and save you so much time. If all you're interested in doing is filming some interviews with people or making sure your footage is usable in documentaries, then this is absolutely the technique you need to use. And I'll say this, I think a third time through this tutorial, this is only available in the current edition, Adobe CC. It only works when you put masks on adjustment layers and that mask is reading all the information below the adjustment layer when it is figuring out where that mask needs to be. So hopefully uh, this is helpful and uh, you don't lean too heavily on this technique, but if you need it, it's here for you and it is an amazing tool that I think was definitely overlooked when there was a lot of buzz about the Adobe CC update. Check out Premium Beat for high quality music and sound effects for your projects. If you are making documentaries, you should definitely grab some soundtracks there. In this case, maybe some creepy, you know, behind the scenes secret agent music because you're interviewing clandestine people. If you want to see more tips, tricks, and tutorials from myself and other industry experts in After Effects and other applications, then you should definitely check out the Premium Beat blog. There are awesome tutorials on there. And uh, a lot of the people who aren't me do great things. If you want to see more of my stuff on Premium Beat, though, check me out in the authors section. If you want to see my tutorials and things outside of Premium Beat, then uh, check out evanabrams.com or hit me up on Twitter at EC Abrams or uh, head over to my YouTube channel. It's uh, EC Abrams on the YouTube and I'm told it's pretty good. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to Premium Beat in all of its channels on Vimeo, on YouTube, and check back here on the site for updates. And uh, I'll see you around the internet. Thank you so much again and have a nice day.